What is going on, everyone? I'm Hunter Doyle here from Philly Insider Podcast. We've got another Eagles video today, and some of you who followed my writing might remember I used to do a piece every year called Under the Radar Eagles Who Can Help the the Playoff Run or the Stretch Run. Uh, it's been very useful the last couple of years because we've had those stretch runs to get into the playoffs. Now we're in the playoffs. So it's a little weird this year doing it, but I did want to do it just to talk about who can help us as we go into this postseason stretch and just finishing the season strong and who can help us you know, in, in little ways that might not be noticed by many. So I'm going to pick, I usually do 10. I'm going to just do eight this year. I just wanted to cut it down a little bit, but um, regardless, I'm excited to do it. And I think just starting off with the offense, Grant Calcaterra, a guy who has played pretty well the last couple weeks, even outside of the receiving game, he's been used as a lead blocker. Like this is a guy who came into the league. We, we knew he would be kind of more of an F tight end and the blocking was not bad, but it would need to develop for sure. Jack Stoll was more the blocking tight end. And look, in 13 personnel, I mean, you, you consider Calcaterra started the season as a guy who was inactive most weeks, right? Now he's playing every week. He's playing in 13 personnel with Goddard out. He's been playing in 12 personnel. And honestly, he's been split out in, in 11 personnel from time to time as that F tight end or just playing in line or as a wing. And whether he's attached to the line of scrimmage or out wide, he's been really good as a lead blocker, um, just getting out into space or, you know, do, doing the dirty work in the middle. Um, and, and getting through the line of scrimmage and leading the way for guys like Miles Sanders and Jalen Hurts. It's been really awesome. I, I have loved what I've seen from him this year. Um, I think that the Eagles, with the different types of run plays they're running, especially the gap scheme, the counter and power with you know different pulling guards and stuff like that, they're able to run action off of that because Calcaterra isn't just limited to just being a blocker or just being a pass catcher, right? Like They're able to run some play action or some motions or stuff like that. Different counters off of those looks with, with Calcaterra and in the pass game if they want to, in the RPO game, whatever they want to do. I honestly have been imp impressed with Calcaterra's improvement, especially the last couple of weeks to the point where he should probably be playing in 12 personnel sets with, with Goddard a good bit. Um, I'm not opposed to Stoll doing it either because I think Stoll has been really, really good um, as a blocker, right? But I, I do think that Calcaterra gives you that kind of extra element as a, a pass catcher as well. So I've been impressed with him. I would love to see Calcaterra play a little bit more down the stretch. My other guy, another guy who's been really good as a run blocker, Zach Paschal. And people laughed about it when we signed him because we didn't really have a great receiving core when we sent, signed him. And then we picked up A.J. Brown a little bit later in the draft, on draft night. But, look, I think I think what Paschal does is really important for this football team. And the RPO game, again, a guy who's not limited to just being a pass catcher. He can run block if he needs to. He can run on that split zone action, whether it's split zone or split zone bluff, where he's going to go like he's running and running towards the M-man on the line of scrimmage to block them, and then he's going to, you know, streak out on that PA slide route and then, you know, get that get that first down, you know, and whether it's a spot route, you know, what, whatever it is in the RPO game, I think he's been really, really good. Uh, I think he's a good third down and red zone threat as well out of the slot. So there's those short yardage situations, those conversion situations, I think Pascal is a great option to have there. And yeah, I think on special teams, he's been really good too. Look, he's he's made a ton of tackles there. He's been really good at setting up blocks for guys on kick returns, punt returns. He's doing his job, and I respect the heck out of him for, for what he's doing on special teams and doing the dirty work. So Pascal, I think, has been a really key role player. My last guy on offense, he's not going to play a ton, but look, Cam Jurgens, he's been playing in some of those six offensive line sets. Now, if you remember in 2020, Luke Jariga, you guys know I was high on him, he played in some of those six O-line sets. And yeah, it, I mean, I think it's a good sign for Jurgens. He's playing there, and I think the Eagles really like him. He's obviously got a lot of potential at center. We've seen him in the limited reps he's gotten, whether it's been garbage time or in preseason. Sure, you can say what you want about the situation, but Jurgens looks really good. Um, and I think in those 6 0 line sets, you have an opportunity. Jeff Mosher mentioned it. He started his career as a tight end. You have an opportunity to leak him out on a play action pass if you really, really, really want to and designate him in, uh, as eligible on that play. So. Yeah, I think he's going to play in some goal line sets for sure, some jumbo packages and short yardage. I think he's been pretty good in special teams, especially on field goal unit. Like, he's doing his job there. So, yeah, credit to him. I am I like what I've seen from Jurgens. Obviously, this is kind of out of the, the roles I mentioned before with Pascal and Calcaterra. Not as big of a role, but I do like what he's doing right now. Moving on to the defense, I like what Milton Williams is doing at that 4-I spot, right? And, you know, we, we play a lot of tight and tough fronts with a 0 technique over the center and then two four eyes on the inside shoulder and then you have usually joseph or davis is going to play the zero shade and then sue is playing that four eye a lot of the time on those early downs and i think milton williams has been paired really well with those guys i thought milton williams was really good in this front early in the season i think he's been good versus the run this year 
and do the D line rotations now and how fresh he can be and how fresh this whole unit can be because of how many guys we have. I think that Milton Williams has played better in the pass rush. I think he's been getting some pressure occasionally, taking advantage of the one-on-ones he's been getting. And honestly, I think he's, you know, even when he's not getting sacks, he's affecting the pocket and he's cleaning up from the pressure other guys are getting and making those sacks and just finishing the job, right? And, you know, look, he's a young player. Um, he's still got some development that, you know, we, we want to see from him. But I think given his role right now, I think he's doing the job. So I, I respect him, respect Milton Williams and what he's doing right now. And then Kaiser White. Look, I know this is a starter, not necessarily more of an under-the-radar guy, but I did want to mention him, and I will actually have N'Kobe Dean on this list. Spoiler alert. So I'm not bashing N'Kobe Dean when I say this, but I think there's been a lot of talk about should N'Kobe Dean get more snaps, this and that. I think Kaiser White has done a tremendous job this season, whether he's playing in those hook curls in the middle, he's playing the middle of the field as a Mike linebacker in, in you know, third down, like true pass, passing downs or passing situations in the two-minute drill. He's able to roam the field there. Um, whether he's going over to play the flat, and, and you know whether it's the curl flat, seam flat, I think he's done a really good job with that. Yeah, I, I think whatever he's been asked to do in pass coverage, he's he's done a really, really, he's done a really respectable job. Like I've really appreciated him. I also think that what he's been doing as a pass rusher slash slash a blitzer, I think it makes us, you know, I, I think it makes us less predictable when he comes up to the line. He's mugged over the center or mugged over the B gap, whatever it is. You really don't know if Kaiser's coming or not because he could totally drop back into pass coverage and make a play there, or he could come and he can meet you with violent force and really make an impact on the, the quarterback's throw. So I think he's. I think people are really underrating what what Kaiser White has done for this football team this year. Um, I think defending the run is probably the weakest part of his game, but I honestly don't think it's that bad. Sure, there's been times where he hasn't been able to shed blocks, and yeah, maybe he's looked out of position. But I also think that part of that was the front or early in the season when Jordan Day or not early in the season, but earlier when Jordan Davis wasn't healthy or when we were playing with four-man fronts that weren't working very well. And I think he, I, look, I think he's been better than giving credit for in that aspect of his game. So moving on, I'd said I would get to N'Kobe Dean. This is kind of a transition into special teams, but I'm also going to talk about N'Kobe Dean potentially playing on defense a little bit. So I do love Kaiser White. I also am putting Dean down on this list. Look, I think he was really good against Tennessee. Um, whether it was shedding blocks, you know, that one where he had that one arm, <laughs> one arm shed where he was getting held, obviously. I think that he looked really good there. He looked really good relating to the flat and pass coverage. I think he looked good in that game. Um, and I, I really am excited to see what he can do down the road. My point being is, you know, maybe he's not going to play on defense as much down the stretch, but if needed, if any of those guys go down, I, I have some confidence in him to get the job done. And I think that's really important to have a guy as Def, who you think, yeah, he could definitely start if one of our guys goes down, and he could possibly be a really good starter down the road in the future once he's you know developed a little bit. Um, on specials, I think he's looked a lot better as of late. Look, he's been he's been shedding a lot of blocks there, and he again talking about violent force. That's a guy who definitely takes good angles to ball carriers and takes good angles around blockers, but also meets blockers and ball carriers with that, that violence force from his hands that I'm talking about with White a little bit too. So. Whether it's kicks, punts, he's, he's doing a really good job just gunning downfield and making plays. And yeah, I'd love to see him paired with Christian Ellis more. You know, I don't know if there's a spot for Christian Ellis on the active roster. Maybe there is. But I, I you know, because Christian Ellis, I think, has been elevated twice. I would put Christian Ellis on this list, but I'm not sure if he's going to be on the active roster. So um, Josiah Scott, yeah, that's another guy on specials. People will laugh at this one just because he, he has made some mistakes when he's been on defense. But hear me out. Let me give my explanation first. Um, I think the mistakes came, obviously, when he was replacing Maddox at the nickel. And look, he did make some plays in those games. Let, let's not get it twisted. I do understand that, you know, the inbreakers he really struggled with. And overall, teams schemed up. They manipulated alignments and motion to make sure that they could get Josiah Scott one-on-one. I do understand that. But I also think now he's going to be playing in dime sets as that extra sixth defensive back, right? He's not going to be playing as the nickel anymore. And... I think he's. Uh, uh, it's good to have him as that extra to be DB because he's very versatile. I posted an all twenty two clip the other day of him playing in that three invert look that we do. The the double that both the safeties double buzz and then Josiah Scott goes back and plays in the middle of the field and and he did a really good job getting back there quickly to cut off any potential posts or anything like that. So I, I think that that's important to have. I think also his versatility, having a guy who you know can play safety. If we have safety injuries right now, Wallace has not looked the best when he's been in there. You know, there's a reason he has been moved back on the depth chart over the past few years. Josiah Scott's a guy who could go back there and play if you need him to at safety. I think he'd probably be better than Wallace. So 
I think that from what we're doing from a defensive perspective on those passing downs, Josiah Scott's important. I think him providing depth is important. But I also think he's been a key special teamer for us over the past season and a half. So I really am I'm I'm really hopeful he can come up big for us in some some big ways at, down the stretch. Maybe maybe not again, not playing the slot, but again, playing as an extra DB and playing on special teams I think is really important. More underrated than people think about it. Um Britton Covey, the last guy I never thought in a million years. If you told me this from the first, if you told me this after the first five weeks of the season, I would have told you you were nuts if I was going to put him on this list. Right? What a turnaround he's had over the past couple weeks. You know, let's give credit where credit's due. Michael Clay has gotten the units better. The the blocking on the punts has been better as well. They've been in better position. And I think on the kick return unit, you look at a guy like Boston Scott, who maybe I didn't put him on this list, but that's because I just. I, you know, we know what Boston Scott is now, and I think he's a really, really good, really, really good depth piece at running back, and I think he's a good kick returner too. I think he's been a better kick returner than in years past, this year specifically. But point being, I think the kick, the, the blocking on those kick returns has been much better. Um, but I also think Cubby's been a lot smarter with when to field punts and when to let it go. I think he's been part smarter with what angle am I going to take to avoid ball, the pursuit, right? And then he's avoided some arm tackles, surprisingly. Like, I never thought I would say that, like, after I'd seen him get clotheslined so many times early in the season. He still gets hit pretty hard, but man, he's a tough kid, and I respect the heck out of him for that. I didn't like him at the start of the season, like I said, but I think his development has really been impressive as of late. So guys, those are my eight under-the-radar Eagles. Let me know what y'all think, and yeah, God bless y'all. Run, booby, run. Fly, Eagles, fly. We will see y'all later. Peace out.